Welcome to church. This is our 10th online service, our ninth week in a row. Just a couple of announcements. First is, fun script orders are due today, so I need them by uh, basically 3 o'clock this afternoon on Sunday, May 17th, so we can get the orders in and they'll be back Thursday or Friday of this week. Um, the next order after today will be June the 14th, followed by July 12th, August 16th, and then into September 13th. I will keep you posted on those. Zoom meetings. Carol Youth Group will be happening this holiday Monday because, well, we're stuck at home and can't do a lot of things that we would normally do on holiday Monday. So we're missing the Watford Road Race. Uh, we're also missing our canoe fundraiser. So uh, for those that usually go to our canoe fundraiser and steak barbecue, just think about the money you'd normally give to that and maybe you can give it a little extra donation if you're able to to cover our costs at Hope and St. Andrews. Um, information on giving donations is, of course, on the uh, Facebook page. Also, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock is Bible Study. Hope Youth Group at on Thursday scheduled for 1 o'clock. Uh, I'm just going to check with a couple people to make sure that still works. If you know someone who doesn't have the Internet but can play a DVD, I am making some DVD services, so just let me know about that. Hey, folks, Right Now Media can offer some videos to look at life from a Christian point of view. Uh, if you go to our website... Um, Hope United Church Alvinston. If you Google Hope United Church Alvinston, look for home and go to that website under programs. You can click on a link and you can sign yourself up there now. So that would be great. Also, since this isn't a normal time of communications, if any of you have praise requests or prayer requests, please keep sending them in to me and I'll include them in our service. Um, I believe that's all of our announcements, so let's sit back. Pray together, sing together, and worship God, and He'll give us a strong foundation. Our Lord and our God, the scriptures teach us that Jesus is the chief cornerstone, and if we build our lives on him, we will have a firm foundation on which to live our lives and face the challenges that come to us. And so, God, as we all face this continued effects of the coronavirus, along with those of us who have other health care or situational trials and troubles, please help us to find in you what we need to overcome in such a way as to make your reality a visible to the world, a world that's often not interested in Jesus as their cornerstone. Lord, as we come to into your presence, bless and help each of us as we have our needs. We ask this all in Jesus' name, who has already blessed us with a steady decline in new cases here in Ontario and Canada, with a chance to celebrate Mother's Day in a new and different way last weekend, for our custodian at Hope Church who finished up with a spring cleaning, for the golf courses and other businesses that are opening up this weekend and next week, and for the number of people volunteering for special music for our online services. We also thank you, God, for Kyle, a young person who grew up in our church who's getting an interview with the Ottawa Public School Board, and we ask that you would bless him. We also pray that you would be uh, with Grace, who is now home from the hospital and feeling better. Lord, for all these blessings, we give you thanks and praise. And yet, Lord, forgive us for the times that we forget to focus on your blessings, where we so focus on the challenges in our lives that we miss the foundation and help you do give us. Forgive us for missing your blessings and for any other sins that come to mind 
that we lift to you in silent prayer. Lord, hear our silent prayers of confession. Forgiving God, help us to grow and mature, to become the kind of men and women you've created us to be, living in harmony with you and all of creation. We ask this in Jesus' strong name. Amen. scripture reading is taken from um, 1st Peter chapter 2 verses 4 to 8. As you come to him the living stone rejected by men but chosen by God and precious to him you also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house 
to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone, and a stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. Our next reading is taken from Matthew um, 28, verses 11 to 20. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say, His disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this reports get if this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story had been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. And the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Um, our responsive reading is taken from Psalm 107, verses 32 to 38. Let them exalt him in the assembly of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. He turned rivers into a desert, flowing springs into thirsty ground, and fruitful land into a salt waste, because of the wickedness of those who lived there. He turned the desert into pools of water, and the parched ground into flowing springs. There he brought the hungry to live, and they founded a city where they could settle. They sowed fields and planted vineyards that yielded a fruitful harvest. He blessed them, and their and their numbers greatly increased, and he did not let their herds diminish. Changing hands.
Let us pray. Lord, as we look into this letter of Peter, into this Gospel of Matthew, help us to learn and to grow how you want to give us a firm foundation and how we can grow as priests and as witnesses to Jesus. We ask this in Jesus' strong name. Amen. So our Christian faith is what is described as a revealed religion. The idea is that a real, living Creator God has not left us to figure out life on our own, but rather our loving Creator has revealed Himself to us and how to live through the Law and the Prophets as recorded in the Old Testament and in the New Testament accounts of Jesus and His work in the early Church by the Holy Spirit. Colossians 1.15 simply puts it, The Son, Jesus, is the visible image of of the invisible God. And to think that a loving Creator God would not communicate with His creation is about as absurd as a store selling, say, patio furniture, needing some assembly, but not sending any instructions. Any business expecting its customers to figure out how to assemble their products on their own would not stay in business long. In the same way, it is hard to imagine that a loving Creator God wouldn't find a way to communicate with his creation. Now, today, many reject the idea of a God even existing. They say it doesn't make sense. But to me, to be honest, it makes no logical sense that God doesn't exist. My thinking on the existence of God is similar to that of William Paley, who lived from 1743 to 1805. He was an English clergyman and philosopher. And he used to tell a story that when walking across the lawn, if you ever looked down and to found a pocket watch in the grass, no one ever thought that the watch just happened to come together and be there by mere chance. It, there had to be a watchmaker. And if someone refused to admit there was a watchmaker, how seriously would he or she be taken? And for myself, growing up on a dairy farm just off the 401 east of London, it felt like I was looking at something a lot more complex than a mere watch. Helping to plant and watch crops grow and helping to harvest them year after year told me there was a creator. As I helped calves to be born, grow up and give milk and even milk them and I saw a whole creation that works in harmony with such complexity to produce so much fruitfulness, I have never been able to believe that this world was a mere accident. But it was part of a grand scheme created by some great and amazing mind. More than that, as I grew up being taught and reading the Bible, the instruction guide for this life, 
Even the brokenness of this world is explained in the scriptures. Growing up, I came to understand that when people live as instructed, and everyone and everything is in harmony with God and creation, things work very well. But if just one student at school starts to do what they want to do when they want to do it, chaos breaks out. In the same way as a cell in our body, when it produce, reproduces itself properly, a person is healthy. But if the code gets corrupted and the cell starts reproducing however it wants, when we, when it wants, well, we call it cancer. And when a virus who lives symbiotically in a host, everyone lives well, but if the virus starts damaging the host, we have a disease which kills it, and if the host dies, the virus itself also dies. So with the millions of cells and viruses, what amazes me is that we have so little cancer and so few pandemics. And so when anyone or anything in the world stops fulfilling its created purpose and decides to do what he or she or it wants, when it wants, that is sin. And sin leads to trouble and ultimately even death. So our loving God helps us to deal with sin on all levels. As Peter quotes from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah 28, 16, So this is what the Sovereign Lord says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. The problem is that even though God has given us a stable stone in which to build our lives, ultimately Jesus Christ, the living stone, the problem is that as Peter goes on to say, quoting from the Old Testament, Psalm 8, 118, verse 22, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. He goes on again to quote from Isaiah 8, 13 and 14. The Lord Almighty is the one you are to regard as holy. He is the one you are to fear. He is the one you are to dread. He will be a holy place for both Israel and Judah. He will be a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that causes them to fall. And for the people of Jerusalem, he will be a trap and a snare. You see, the issue in Peter's day and in the Old Testament's time and in our time is that when people don't want to listen to God, our Creator, who gives us a solid foundation upon which to live and do our own things, trouble starts. And we start tripping over that very foundational stone that's m meant to be our foundation. So as people's cells and viruses stop living as they were created, they also will trip over the cornerstone and everyone gets hurt. However, if we build our lives on Jesus, the chief cornerstone, and in so doing, we will find a foundation that can see us through times of trouble. Again, the issue in Peter's day, in the Old Testament time, and in ours, is that the believing community has always been small. In Peter's day, in the first century, the believing church was struggling to su survive following Jesus while the Jews and the Romans around them who rejected Jesus as Messiah didn't really care much about Jesus or them. This meant that like ourselves today, we are trying to live differently from most of our neighbors and most of the people in our world. As Peter goes on to instruct his readers, as you come to him the living stone, rejected by men but chosen by God and precious to him, you also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. The idea is that as we come to the living stone, Jesus Christ, the living cornerstone, and we put our faith in him and let his teachings lead us, we are then being built into a spiritual house which will turn into a holy priesthood. So just as back in the first century, Peter did not want the believing Christians to think of themselves as a persecuted people that neither the Jews nor the Romans really wanted around. He wanted them to think of themselves as a holy priesthood being built into the household of God, 
offering the living Lord acceptable spiritual sacrifices. In the same way, as we face challenges, we're never to let ourselves think of ourselves as victims. Say, victims of a worldwide pandemic, victims of cancer, or even some other disease or situation. Say, aplastic anemia. You see, back in July of 2018, my son Ryan got diagnosed with aplastic anemia, a disease where the bone marrow doesn't produce enough blood cells. Maybe the best advice Ryan got when he first got diagnosed was to not let this disease define him. And so as we all deal with this COVID-19 virus, and some of us face other trials like cancer or other health problems, we must not think of ourselves as victims. We are the children of God. And we're being built into a household of faith where we are priests. And even thinking differently will affect how we live and feel. Just knowing that we're not victims, but we are specially called people of God, given a purpose by God to fulfill. Now, what does a priest do? Well, a priest is a mediator between God and humanity. Jesus is our perfect mediator, our great high priest, Hebrews says, who on one hand represents God to us and represents us humans to God. So, when we want to know who God is or what he's like, we look at Jesus, the visible image of the invisible God. So, and Jesus also shows and tells us how to live, as he gives us an example of how to live as an ideal disciple, or follower of God, or son of God. And when God looks at us, he doesn't see us, he sees Jesus' sacrifice on the, on the cross. So even though we might sin, we're not treated as sinners, but as forgiven people if we but repent. And if we repent, we get forgiven, and we become adopted brothers and, and sisters of Jesus, that is, children of God. And this is not a position earned by us being good enough. It's a free gift given as any inheritance is given, to any who put their faith and trust in Jesus. So, do we sin? Yes, but admit it. Ask for forgiveness, and then change. And don't let sin and sickness or anything else define us. We are children of God. Now, do we feel like we have to measure up to be loved by God? Well, sometimes children do get that idea. But what do I say to you? Stop it. That's what tripping over Jesus and his cornerstone forgiveness looks like. God already loves us. That's why he revealed himself to us in and through the law and died on the cross while we were yet sinners. The prophets and most perfectly Jesus testified to us in the Old and New Testaments about how to live and how much God loves us. So we can't make God love us, love us, us he already does. All we need to do is accept that gift. And if we as 21st century people can do this, even imperfectly, we will still begin to fulfill our roles and, as priests and witnesses, not to our own goodness, but the goodness of Jesus. In the resurrection reading from Matthew, the women went back telling the people that Jesus was alive and the tomb was empty. At the same time, a group of Roman soldiers left to guard the tomb to make sure no one would steal the, Jesus' body and claim he was alive, also ended up observing the resurrection. This is what Matthew wrote. While the women were on their way back, some of the guards went to the city to report to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders, they devised a plan, and they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. You see, Roman soldiers were not allowed to let people to escape. If they did, what was the consequence? They died for it. So for a Roman soldier to tell a story that he had fallen asleep and allowed Jesus' disciples to steal his body would have been dangerous. So that's why they had to pay out a great sum of money. 
And if they promised that they would protect them, the soldiers, if word got back to their governor pilot about this story. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed, and it says this so story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day, that is, the day when Matthew's Gospel was recorded. Now notice, did the soldiers or even the women do anything special? The idea of witnessing to Jesus sort of just happens as we build our lives on the chief cornerstone, and he helps us to overcome by living life as it comes. Back to my son Ryan. He has partly responded to treatment for his aplastic anemia, but is not fully recovered. His blood clouts continue to be out of the danger zone, but not normal. And so at this time, he can't go back to university, and he waits. So while he waits, he still tries to allow, not allow the condition to define him by living as normally as possible. That means he practices his drums and percussions percussion every day, if not every day, five days a week. He then continues to practice and play out where he can. And he and his sister are involved with a group called House of Worship, part of the Power to Change program in London. This past Christmas vacation, he and his sister Julianne, along with some other friends from London, were part of a worship team to at a Christmas conference called Power to Change Plus in Toronto. Near the end of the five-day conference, the worship team, which had gotten up and done uh, to gather for prayer, they were asking if there was anything to pray about, or praise God about. And so Julianne and Ryan mentioned his aplastic anemia. What was interesting is even though they'd had to do sound check at 6.50 in the morning, and they often didn't get to bed till about midnight, these are the kind of hours that a lower hemoglobin can be a real challenge. And so Ryan was concerned, but after five days, he managed it way better than he or his sister ever expected. So they thanked God for this in prayer, but they also prayed and asked for his health that he would be able to get back to, the school, to school. Now the rest of the worship team who did not know Ryan's situation were surprised at his condition. Why? because they didn't even know he was sick. Ryan was so much not allowing his health situation to define him that he didn't talk about it and they didn't even know about it. Folks, the promise is that if we build our lives on Jesus, our chief cornerstone, we don't need to panic in tough times. We will have a firm foundation on which to face the challenges of life. And the way we face them is to witness to Jesus by what? Living out life with his strength as we face our challenges. Matthew ends his gospel with these words. Then Jesus came and said to them, All authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Go and therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you to the very end of the age. You know, it is when we face our challenges, be it sickness or other trials, it's in our weaknesses that God's power is made most visible. So folks, in conclusion, by trusting in Jesus, even though he may be rejected by most people, we can live different lives with different values. And as we build our lives on Jesus, the chief cornerstone, the promise is that we will never be put to shame. We won't have to panic in times of trouble. God will see us through, even as Jesus promises to be with us to the very end of the age and on into eternity. But as we live our lives, we are being made into a priestly nation. We are bearing witness to Jesus just by living out our lives with his strength, with his hope, as we face sicknesses and challenges. And by not allowing our problems to define us, but to realize that we are adopted children of God, with God's help we can show and tell the world around us, he is real. As the scriptures teach us, 
It is in our weakness that God's strength is made most visible. So in this time of weakness with this virus or other situations, may God be made known in and through us, his people. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as your disciples help us to hear and accept your revealed truth, you are real and you love us. By building our lives upon Jesus, your Son, the chief cornerstone, we will have a foundation that will allow us not to be defined either by our successes or our troubles, but we will realize that we are your adopted children and can find strength to overcome in such a way that we will be priests and witnesses to your reality and goodness. Please, Lord, use this time of weakness to help us make known to our world you are real and you are good. We ask this in Jesus' strong name. Amen. presence seeking your guidance and help. We thank you for the opening up of our society that has begun as the number of new cases continue to decline overall, even as the number of tests are increasing. Please bless our government and health leaders, federally, provincially, and municipally, as they make decisions uh, to get people back to work as quickly as possible. Also give them the wisdom on the timing and the safety procedures that are needed to keep people safe. We continue to pray for the staff and residents of long-term care facilities where the vast majority of the deaths have occurred. Bless them in a special way. Lord, we pray for all those frontline workers in hospitals, grocery stores, and in other stores as they open up, that you would help us to do this opening up with safety and compassion and responsible behavior to keep people safe. Meanwhile, God, we continue to pray for guidance about our summer camps and the staff that are depending upon jobs. We thank you for the uh, wage subsidy grant that we did get and we pray that you would give us wisdom on how to negotiate this unpredictable summer. We also pray for the doctors and dentist appointments and pr other procedures, chiropractors and pain treatments that they would open up soon so, so that people could get the attention they need quickly and safely. We continue to pray for those who are unable to work in companies that have little or no income. We also pray for the stress of being shut down at home and how it has put stress upon families. God, it is good to spend time together, but sometimes the stress can cause us to have challenges. And so be with all those families who are feeling a little stressed out. 
Meanwhile, God, we continue to pray for the ministries of our two churches, at Hope and at St. Andrews. We pray that you would help us to support and encourage each other so people don't feel isolated. Help us to learn and tr trust in you. And to, as we open up, to do it responsibly and safely. Lord, we also pray for those with compromised immune systems. We think of those that connected with our churches directly and indirectly. We pray for Blossom, for Ryan and Bill, who all seem to be doing somewhat better. This week we pray for people dealing with cancer diagnosis, like Barb and Alvin and Lisa and Frank, and others who are waiting on tests. Lord, Alvin did not get a good report this week, and so be with him and his family who are part of our church. Bless them with your peace and strength at this time. We continue to pray for a colleague in ministry, John, who I know is home and is recovering, and he may be having some other small issues. Give him strength and bless him and his congregation. I also think of a member of our church, Jenny, her, his, her cousin, who had a bone marrow transplant this week on Thursday. I know that there are always issues, and people are nervous around such important and uh, difficult uh, procedures. We pray that you'd be with him. Guide the doctors and nurses and help him to recover and be with all those who are concerned about him but have limited contact. Meanwhile, God, as the virus deaths do continue, we pray for all those who are mourning loved ones, whether they've died from this COVID virus or not. As funerals are mostly suspended, we pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones but can't do it in the normal way. Finally, God, for any other concerns that we have upon our hearts and minds, we lift them to you now in silent prayer. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your hearing and answering according to your will, power, and might. We ask in Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God the Father, as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.